What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the channel. Before we start the video, I want you to do me a, a ginormous favor. If I helped you at all this year in fantasy, if you've gotten one extra point because of some advice that I gave you, go like the video. It's the only way this channel grows. But <clears throat> if I've hurt you, if I've given you shitty advice, Please don't hit the dislike button because I don't want a bad ratio. I'm a little sad right now, I'm gonna be honest with you. It is week 16 of the football season. The last week of fantasy football, which means another year in the books or another year older, another year closer to being dead. What a time to be dead. Anyways, if you're still here with me, that means you are in your fantasy championship. Congrats, good shit. We're still rolling and this will be my last episode of the regular season. I got some good stuff in store for the off season though. We're gonna be doing a first round mock draft, an early first round mock draft of 2017 season as soon as this season is in the books. But we gotta get past this week, we gotta help y'all win some championships. That's exactly what we're gonna do on today's show. Recap the injuries of week 15 and get into the top waiver wire ads for week 16. Cue to music. Also, one more note before we jump into the injuries. <clears throat> I do post the waiver wire like worksheet every week on the website. Uh, so go check that out, bdgeat.com. Big dog gotta eat. Waiver wire sheet. Week 16 will be up there. There's more players, it's more comprehensive, more stuff for you to look at. This is just kind of my top overview of the injuries in the top waiver wire pickups. That will probably be more helpful to a lot of you guys who are in deeper leagues. So go check that out. Link will be in the description. All right, let's get into Ladarius Green, another concussion. We know he's dealt with this shit since the preseason. They were saying he was going to have to retire because of the amount of concussions. He got another one. I don't even know. I, I was not expecting him to play again this week, this year, this lifetime. I don't know. We'll have to wait for reports, but another concussion for Darius Green almost definitely puts him out of your lineup for championship week. Next, we got Adam Thielen out in Minnesota. He uh, left with a neck injury. They were putting him in the concussion protocol. Not sure what happened. Uh, we don't have a report or an update. Either way, he's nothing more than desperation wide receiver for play. I'm sitting him if I'm anyone. All right, let's get to some of the good stuff. Melvin Gordon. Coach Michael Coy was non-committal today on his sprained hip slash sprained knee. Didn't say he was gonna play, didn't say he wasn't gonna play. We're gonna have to wait for more updates throughout the week to see if this star running back will be back in the lineup. They get the Cleveland Browns, so if he is back in the lineup, definitely fire him up as a sure, high-end RB1. Julio Jones, another one of your first round picks. Shouldn't say another, because Melvin Gordon definitely was not, but next year he possibly could be. Stay tuned for the early 2017 first round draft Mock draft coming up after the regular season wraps up. Julio the God still nursing that turf toe or that toe sprain or whatever it is that they want to say he has. They're going to put him through a high-speed test, they said, on Wednesday. So we'll have to check back in on that status. Again, if he's back in the lineup, he's a high-end wide receiver one against that shitty, shitty Carolina Panthers defense. Another all-pro wide receiver, A.J. Green. You know, it's funny, as a Falcons fan, I was thinking back to when, um, you know, they had that draft and the Falcons traded up and traded all those picks away to get Julio Jones at six. And I remember sitting there and thinking like, oh my God, it was like pick three and we were pick, we traded up to pick six, I believe it was. And I was like, oh my God, I want AJ Green or Patrick Peterson so bad. AJ Green goes off the board. Patrick Peterson goes off the board. We're on the board with Julio Jones left, obviously. We take Julio Jones. And at the time, I mean, you can't be mad that they took Julio Jones, but I mean, looking back on it, I'm fucking ecstatic that we did. And not that, I mean, obviously, A.J. Green and Patrick Peterson are both pro bowlers. I actually, maybe I'd rather have Patrick Peterson on the team just because we've needed help on Pasty for a while. I mean, we got better, but like, I don't know, Julio's the ones in general. What do you guys think? Would you rather, if you could take one of three of those guys, Julio, A.J. Green, or Patrick Peterson, Knowing what you know now, who would you want to start a franchise around? Answer that. Anyways, back to AJ Green. So, uh, barring any kind of setbacks, he's supposed to play. 
this week. He's going against the Texans team. Good pass defense, uh, but I'm if he's in the lineup, he's he's in my lineup. If he's in the Cincy lineup, he's in my fantasy lineup. Sure fire, high end wide receiver two with a lot of wide receiver one potential. They don't have a lot of weapons out there. Dalton's still working with basically just Eifert and washed up Brandon LaFell and uh, a young Tyler Boyd. So definitely fire up Green if he's there. And then uh, I think we have Darren Sproles went into the concussion protocol. But he's going to be back in the lineup for Thursday Night Football against the boys in blue, against the G-Men. Uh, Sproles another guy I'm not looking to fire up anytime soon. Giants defense is just too good, man. That free agency was just gorgeous to them. And uh, their defense is really coming into shape. Perfect time of the year for them to do so. Sproles on that, uh, no, another desperation flex play if you really, really, really need him. Luckily, that wraps up the injury report for the week. Not a lot of injuries. People ate their vegetables this week. Good for them. So let's move on to the waiver wire pickups, the best section of this video. I'm going to skip quarterbacks for now because I don't really feel like talking about them right now. There's not a lot to talk about in the quarterback section. I'm going to jump right into running backs. All right, a guy that I had on the list last week, he's 60% owned. Needs to be 100% owned after this upcoming Wednesday morning when waiver wire pickups are complete. Your boy Ty Montgomery out of Green Bay, 16 carries, over 160 yards, two tutties, fell in his own twice. James Sarks wasn't playing, didn't matter. He wasn't going to get carries if he was playing, as we saw from the previous week. If Ty Montgomery is available on your wire and you have any fab budget left, use all your monies. Use it all. Go broke. Go stupid, go stupid, shout out Big Sean. They go against Minnesota. I know that's a scary defense to go against, but they did just let up 34 points to the Indianapolis Colts. So Ty Montgomery is the number one ad on the waiver wire this week. Like I said, 60% owned, so he is available in 40% of leagues. Next we got Kenneth Farrow, 58% owned in Yahoo leagues. A guy that, this is definitely, um, I'm gonna make up a word here, I don't think this makes sense, Preminiscent. Sounds like it works though. This is premonition on whether or not Melvin Gordon plays. Melvin Gordon's playing, you're absolutely not breaking any sort of bank on Kenneth Farrell. He was pretty awful last week. What I will say is he got a nice workload, out touched uh, Ronnie Hillman 17 to 7, and now they get a Cleveland defense that's just awful against every as and every aspect of football. I'm gonna move the camera up a little bit because I think it's getting dork. It's getting dark in here. So move your cameras up. Yeah, so Kenneth Farrow, uh, he's going to get them the main bulk of touches as long as Melvin Gordon's out. If he's the only running back going against the Cleveland Browns, then I would say, you know, go for it. Throw him in as an RB2. He's almost guaranteed to get 15, 17, 18 touches, and you could definitely do worse than that. All right, next up, a guy who's probably been on my list for like 17 straight weeks now, your boy Deion Lewis out in New England. He got 20 touches this week. And I, I didn't look at the numbers, but I feel like that might be his career high. And 18 of those were carries, which is absurd. I don't know. I, I would love to pick apart Bill Belichick's brain and be like, what the fuck were you thinking here? Why did you do this? Why did you do her? When are you doing that? But, you know, we'll never know. Maybe after he retires, he'll give us a nice documentary. He'll write a book. Something for the community. Something so we can understand his sick fucking brain. Anyways, Deion Lewis, 20 touches. Went over 100 yards, tells me a couple things. Tells me Bill Belichick fully trusts that he's 100% healthy and ready to carry a full workload going forward. Next thing is they get the Jets, who have a tough run defense. And no one in football, no one in the history of football is better than playing to the weakness of an opposing defense. And that would be running backs catching passes. So, you know, you, you can see where I'm going here. Q, Dion. Dion the God. Q Dion's game. They'll probably shy away from the run a little bit, look to pass, look to get it off to the running backs, look to dump it off. So, Dion Lewis, I really like him this week against the Jets. I think he gets in the end zone. I think he sees another 13 to 17 touches. Now, next one, you might you might think is a little bit of a surprise, but I like Chris Ivory out in Jacksonville. He's 40% owned. He just came back from his hamstring injury. He missed two weeks and he outcarried TJ Yeldon. TJ Yeldon outtouched him. So more reception, but but Ivory out carried him, and they're going against the Tennessee Titans rush defense that's overrated. They don't play well on the road. Chris Ivory, interestingly, so Gus Bradley just got fired, as you guys probably know. Doug Marone got got placed as the interim head coach for now, 
And if you guys remember Doug Marone, he was the Buffalo Bills head coach in 2013-2014. And during that span, the Buffalo Bills were one of the highest volume um, rushing offenses in the NFL. So I'd expect him as an interim coach to kind of play this safe. You know, he's not going to want to go in there, be like, look at me, I'm still an asshole. Let me let Blake Bortles throw the ball. 40 times, you know, so I think he's going to use this ground and pound mentality and obviously Chris Ivory is a much better pseudo running back for the ground and pound mentality over a guy like TJ Yeldon. So I, I like Chris Ivory as a very sneaky play this week to get 13 to 15 carries um, and if he could put together, you know, string together a few nice runs, I could see him getting 80, 80 to 90 yards and if he gets lucky, he'll find pay dirt, but that's been few and far between for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Also, again, like I said in the beginning of the video, this is, these are not all the waiver wire pickups. If you go on the website, there's more guys, but I just want to touch on my favorite ones, my top ones. Lastly, Justin Forsett out in Denver. He's clearly become the lead back there. He had 10 carries, uh, four receptions, so he had 14 touches. Could do worse than that, and he's now back with Gary Kubiak. He's completely familiar with the offense. He's much more comfortable with Justin Forsett next to Trevor Simeon than he is with Devonta Booker, who's played terribly this year. Now, Dustin Forsett, if you remember, played with Gary Kubiak back in Baltimore when he had his career year. Yeah, I know you guys all remember that one year Dustin Forsett did that one thing, and he was really good for that one period of time. I remember that shit too. Now he gets team back up with Gary Kubiak, so, you know, the more time he spends with him, the, the more familiar he'll get with everything. and. And I, I, you know, he trusts Forsett, obviously. He's been there and he's he's executed with him in the lineup. So I, I like his chances of getting another 12 to 15 touches. And that brings us over to the wide receivers. A guy that I was very high on last week and probably the week before, Dontrell Inman on the San Diego Chargers. 36% owned, caught five balls on eight targets for 68 yards. And he led the team in both receptions and receiving yards. And guess who he gets this week? The Cleveland Browns. God, I feel so bad for Cleveland. I mean, at least as a football fan. Imagine you lived in Cleveland and you weren't like an Indians or a Cavs fan. Woo! Woo! There's not much more I need to say there other than he's becoming Rivers' preferred possession receiver and they get the Cleveland Browns. You know, he's got a nice floor he has. He's gotten a bunch of targets over his last four or five games. You know, I think his floor is five receptions for 50 yards. So if you're in a PPR league, you're looking at double-digit points and uh, pretty high upside given their matchup with the Browns. Next up... Robbie Anderson, another guy I touched on last week, a guy I was tweeting about this week. He had another big game. Uh, I caught a big 40-yard touchdown from Bryce Petty. And let me read this tweet to you guys that I tweeted out this last week. All right, so listen to this tweet. I'm going to read it off to you. Robbie Anderson has gotten 31.2% of Bryce Petty's targets this year. For reference, Mike Evans, yes, Mike Evans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, leads the NFL in team target share at 31.3%. Robbie Anderson's gotten 31.2% of Bryce Petty's target share. Every time he drops back, he's looking at your boy, Robbie Anderson. Now, I know Marshall got a ton of targets last week, uh, 11 targets, but Robbie Anderson made the most of his targets and he's still the favorite for Bryce Petty. Don't ask me why, Anunua and Marshall are both freak athletes and are both awesome receivers, but he likes Robbie Anderson. He's going to keep chucking it up to him. They get the Patriots. I still think Robbie Anderson you know, has a nice floor in terms of the targets. He's going to see 8 to 10 targets like he has been, and a uh, big play could be in his future. Let's move over to Tyler Lockett out in Seattle. Another huge game for him. Now he's had over 19 fantasy points in two of his last three weeks. He caught seven of eight targets, had over 130 yards receiving, and found pay dirt. He has at least six targets in four straight games. So he's getting the looks. Russell Wilson, Sierra's going to be pissed. And now he gets the Cardinals in week 16. Now I know you're thinking like, oh, fuck, the Cardinals. The Cardinals are not what you're probably thinking of. Now... Cardinals just faced the Saints. And who was the Saints slot receiver? Brandon Cooks. Yeah, do me a favor, go look up Brandon Cooks' stats from last week against the Cardinals. Brandon Cooks, slot receiver. Tyler Lockett, slot receiver. If so facto, you get what I'm saying. Cameron Meredith, 33% owned. The number one target for Matt Barkley. Don't care that Alshon Jeffrey's back. But 9 of 13 
balls for 104 yards. In the two games with Matt Barkley under center, he's caught or he's seen eight targets and 13 targets, so he's clearly a high volume target guy in that offense. And I'm really just not worried about Alshon Jeffrey. You know, he didn't do shit last game until the fourth quarter when he started exploding, but until then, it, Barkley wasn't even looking his way. And now they get the Redskins' terrible pass defense. And I know you guys are saying Josh Norman, Josh Norman, but yeah, here's the good thing. Alshon Jeffrey's back as the number one receiver in that offense, meaning Norman's gonna go cover Alshon Jeffrey, leaving Cameron Meredith open. So I, I see another double digit target game for Cameron Meredith. Uh, a nice, you know, wide receiver three flex play for you. Lastly, this is kind of a long shot, and I'm not even sure I really believe myself when I say this, but Algic Robinson of the Atlanta Falcons, dependent on the health of Julio, dependent on the health of Taylor Gabriel. Taylor Gabriel left for a little bit of time during the game, but he came back, so I'm not really actually thinking he's going to miss any time. But if Julio misses this week again, Algic Robinson will play that outside role, that deep threat role, against the Panthers who are, you know, terrible at covering deep passes. Now, Robinson caught four balls for over 100 yards this previous week, so, you know, you could see a lot of those deep shots from Matty Ryan to Aldrich because he's going to be playing the outside uh, while Sanu kind of takes over the slot receiver if he's there. And Carolina has just been terrible, like I said. They're 28th against fantasy receivers this year, so... A lot of room for uh, for some upside. Robinson's an absolute upside play. So if you're maybe if you're a big underdog this week or something like that, and you're looking for a deep flex play, what you want, bro? Stop texting me. Um, if you're looking for like a deep flex play, Robinson could possibly, hopefully, quite maybe extra medium be your guy. That's gonna wrap up the receivers. If you dig what I'm saying thus far. Give me a thumbs up. All right, that moves us to the tight end position. This is actually not a bad week for the for free agency tight ends. I got a couple on my list for you. First, first of being Charles Clay out in Buffalo. I actually picked him up and played him in my PPR league uh, this week. Got me to the championship. Good man you are. He's 12% owned. He has back-to-back -back big games. Scored a touchdown in each of those games. Now he gets a Miami defense. They're Pretty good against the pass, but that's likely because they have guys like Brent Grimes on the outside. They've let up a ton of touchdowns this year. 24 passing touchdowns on the year, which is 8th worst in the NFL. So they struggle when it gets to, you know, the red zone. They, they're not susceptible to the big play. They're not susceptible to a lot of receiving yards. But when they get down to the end zone, where Charles Clay obviously will do his best work as a big tight end. He's not that big, but as a tight end, you know what I mean. Uh, that's where he could take advantage of this matchup. Next up, we got Hunter Henry, 20% owned. Now, he's still the number two to Antonio Gates, but he's been way more productive than Gates has been for the last, like, four or five weeks. Hunter Henry has four touchdowns in the last five weeks, including one this previous week, and now he gets the Cleveland Browns, who led up the second most fantasy points to the tight end position on the year. They've led up three touchdowns, two tight ends over the last two weeks, Need I say more? Lastly, an interesting name, a very, very, very deep, deep name here. Ryan Griffin of the Houston Texans. Before you skip, don't skip. He might actually win you a championship. I know that sounds crazy. He caught all eight of his targets for 85 yards. Now, I know Houston Texans, they sat their $72 million man, Brock Osweiler, put in Tom Savage. <clears throat> Excuse me, Tom Savage. He's an average savage. He's a fucking savage. He threw up 260 yards, and he targeted Ryan Griffin a ton. Clearly likes the tight end. Clearly likes to look that way. Now, CJ Fedorowicz was out of the game with a concussion, which is the real reason why Ryan Griffin was able to prosper, you know? Now, uh, there's no word yet on Fedorowicz actually passing the concussion protocol so he was he wasn't even close to practicing last week so there's a decent chance that he doesn't suit up again this week and even more likely making him not this like i'm so terrible at grammar and english it's a better chance of him not suiting up this week because all the game well most of the games are on saturday so you know he doesn't he has one less day of rest now the thing about ryan griffin too is that even when fedorowicz was in you know when he was playing uh, Griffin got five targets or more in nine of the 14 games throughout the year. So it's not like he was not like he wasn't playing at all. But now that Fedorowicz is out, he's like an every snap player. He he, he shot up from like 20 25 percent of the snaps to 75 percent. He's going to be an every snap player basically on offense. 
if Fedorowicz misses the next game. And we see that with Tom Savage under center, he likes Ryan Griffin a lot. 8 of 8, 85 yards. That's a huge PPR day. Um, you know, a touchdown would be nice, but we'll see. And last thing to add, they get to play the Cincinnati Bengals, who are 31st in the NFL in terms of adjusted fantasy points allowed to the tight end. So, Fedorowicz is out. Griffin's going to see the targets. He's got a, a gorgeous matchup. The revenue is gorgeous. That's all I got to say. I guess we can get back to the quarterbacks since I just touched on Ryan Griffin. Oh, God, this hurts me to say this. There's just not all the guys that usually stick out on the waiver wire that you stream week to week just have shitty matchups this week. So, I'm going to give you Tom Savage, the Savage himself. 260 yards last week, filling in for Brock Osweiler, led them to a comeback victory, and now he gets Cincinnati Bengals. Not a good pass defense, and I, I, like, this is a ridiculous thing to point out, I guess, and, and use this as a big advantage, but it's December, it's fucking cold outside, and now Tom Savage gets to play inside, you know, in a dome, compared to a lot of the streamers that you'll see on the waiver wire that have to play in 10 degree weather. Now, I mean, it's debatable, it's, it's objective to say whether or not you think of that as an advantage, but Tom Savage played decently. He's got good weapons around him between Griffin, Hopkins, Lamar Miller, Will Fuller, you know, and he gets to play inside. So, you know, that's my reach of the week for quarterback. And lastly, I've always been giving you guys one defense. Last week I did two. This week I'm going to get back to one. One defense that is a good streaming option for y'all. And this week we get the boys out in San Diego, the Chargers, 30% owned. Now... The reason I like them, it, it's a mix of things. Number one being, they get to play the Cleveland Browns. Now, I can't just use that as my reason every single week. I gotta give you guys some numbers, some facts, some substance to my to my choices. Everybody got choices. I choose to get money, I'm stuck to this bread. Name that song. So, San Diego, they have four straight games with at least an interception. They had a three interception game a few weeks back. Uh, they have two forced fumbles in the last four games, so that's eight turnovers in the last four games. They have uh, multi-sack games and back-to-back -back games. So, you know, they're they're getting to the quarterback. They're causing turnovers, interceptions, forced fumbles. Um, they just allowed 19 points to a very good Oakland offense. And now they get to go against the Browns, who are the second lowest scoring offense in the entire NFL scoring like 15 and a half points a game. So <clears throat> I like where, I like how this is lining up right now. I like the Chargers to come through big and uh, I like them as my favorite streaming option thus far. <sighs> I think a tear's about to come down. Last waiver wire episode of the year. Yeah. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the um, episode for week 16 and um, He goes, give it up. He's got a bald ass head. He's like, just stop trying. Yes, yeah, so that's going to wrap up week 16, and that's going to send you guys into championship week. It's been a good season. I'm sorry I kind of missed <coughs> the whole middle portion of the season, but I come when it matters. Am I right? Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe, share, go check out the website. Uh, comment below if you have any sit start questions. Comment below. I actually want to know the answer to that question I asked before. If you'd rather have AJ Green, Patrick Peterson, or Julio Jones on your team right now. You know, I appreciate your guys' support. I appreciate you guys watching as always. And hit me on Twitter. Hit me through email. Hit me physically. I'll give you my address if you really want. Hope y'all have a good night. <laughs> I miss my cocoa butter kisses. Okie dokie, 